ルネームで教えていただけますかキリュウカズマだ Wait, what? That's, that's it? Alright, so what exactly is the ending for Kiryu and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth? And what is the whole deal with the Daidoji faction? Now, regarding the ending or the post credit scene, Haruka and Haruto visit Kiryu in the hospital but found an empty room. Haruto then asks, Where is Grandpa? And Haruka just answered with optimism that Kiryu will eventually show up. Kiryu then is being wheeled down for his daily checkup and looks like cancer has him beat. The doctor then asks for his name, to which he now replies, Kiryu. Now, this ending got a lot of people disappointed, since Kiryu wasn't able to reunite with Haruka and Haruto. So, why did Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth end it this way? And what is up with the Daidoji faction? Before that though, please tiger drop that like and subscribe button if you think that Kiryu and Haruka should have reunited by the end. Join Ataka Defined for more Like a Dragon content. So, the gist of the ending is that Kiryu made three important choices. The first choice that he made is him finally seeking a way to recover from his cancer. Second is him reclaiming his name as Kiryu Kazuma. The third one is his efforts in leaving the Daidoji faction to finally reunite with his friends and family. Now, all of these sound cool, but there is one major problem, and that is the Daidoji faction. A little recap on Yakuza 6. Kiryu's fake death was created to bury a secret that the Daidoji faction has been guarding since World War II, which means that Kiryu is not allowed to interact with any of his friends and family, especially those who know the gravity of the name Kiryu Kazuma, the dragon of Dojima. Except for Datesan, who was in on the deal. But throughout the story of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, the whole quest titled Memoirs of a Dragon, specifically the lifelink, we see Datesan trying to reconnect Kiryu with his old buddies. From the Onomichi boys to Akiyama, who felt left out, and to an extent, Haruka and Haruto, which of course angered the Daidoji faction, so the organization decided to beat up Datesan and threaten Kiryu and his family. Because of this, Kiryu entered a new deal with the Daidoji faction, one of which where he will never interact with any of the party involved with the mission on Hawaii and even Datesan. But there's a problem here. This whole life link thing felt disconnected from the main story, since it has already been leaked to the public that Kiryu Kazuma is alive, as revealed by Tatara. It is difficult to imagine for someone like Kaoru to not know of the whole news that Kiryu Kazuma is alive and is trying to revive the Tojo clan. So this thing was a mess. But it's this type of mess that precisely led to that post-credit scene. Kiryu's fake death is now known to the public to an extent where even the Daidoji faction could no longer spin the story and hide the truth. Everyone knows that Kiryu Kazuma is alive. And that's why Haruka and Haruto are seen visiting Kiryu in the hospital. And that is precisely the kicker as to why Kiryu was able to make those three choices. Now let's look at how Kiryu was able to make those options. First, why is Kiryu trying to recover from his cancer? Given the fact that the top doctors of the Daidoji faction told him that it's too late for him to recover and he only has 6 months to live. Simply put, Kiryu has regained his will to live. 7 years, working for the Daidoji faction like a dog on the leash who is not allowed to interact outside spiraled Kiryu into depression. This line from Kiryu when he revealed that he has cancer to Ichiban says it all. Before coming home to Japan, Kiryu's mind was focused on the mission to save Akane and a 10-year-old girl named Lani. Kiryu was pushing himself to death just to complete this mission. As far as saying that his death will free everyone he loves from the burden that he has caused, Kiryu for the last few years sees himself as a curse 
that only brings misfortunes to others. But the memoirs of the dragon help Kiryu to see his life in a new perspective. Instead of seeing himself as a man who brings calamity, he is instead graced by how grateful the people are because of him. Kiryu was reminded that these people were inspired by his actions, such as on how the Stardust Duo was motivated by Kiryu's tenacity, on how Taichi grew up as a man who will protect the weak, on how Shizuko now has the courage to face her fear, on how Kaoru remains faithful to those she loves. These people who Kiryu have helped throughout the Yakuza series are now unknowingly helping Kiryu regain his mental fortitude. And even in the main story of Like a Dragon Infant 12, this is what Kiryu is reminded of. And this was even his gift that he bestowed on Majima, Daigo, and Sayajima when they too lose their will to fight. But you might be asking, alright sure, Kiryu is now willing to live again, that's great! But the Deidoji faction's medical team has stated that there is no hope for Kiryu to recover from his cancer. Well again, the whole point of this is for Kiryu to regain his will to live again. It wasn't about curing his cancer. The whole narrative is more focused on whether or not Kiryu will just let cancer be the end of him. And in the end, we see the dragon of Dojima mastering his will to fight another impossibility. Now, to make this optimistic, there actually have been studies correlating a patient's mental health to their improvement in overall medical condition with regards to cancer. So the important thing here is that Kiryu finally chose to live again. Whether he survives or not will be left as a story that will be told in a future Like a Dragon game. Now, up to the second choice that he made was reclaiming his identity as Kiryu Kazuma. This heavily implied in his reply to the doctor as well as his registered name in the hospital. Taichi Suzuki or even Joryu are now dead. Kiryu Kazuma lives again. So how exactly can Kiryu use this name, given that he is supposed to be dead? Well, the boat has already sailed on that one. Since again, it has been publicly leaked that Kiryu Kazuma is alive. And this is a story that even the Daidoji faction can no longer hide. There is no point for Kiryu to keep using a fake alias. And there is no point for the Daidoji faction to pretend that Kiryu is dead. But what happens to the deal between Kiryu and the faction? Now that everyone knows that Kiryu is alive, does it mean that Haruka and the others will now be threatened by the organization? Well, not exactly. If the Daidoji faction intended to harm Haruka and keep hiding Kiryu from them, then why did they allow Haruka and Haruto to casually visit Kiryu in the hospital? Knowing the faction, they could have done something already such as covering Kiryu's trucks and moving him away into another secluded area where he can get treatment for his cancer. But obviously, that is not what happened. And even Haruka was able to read Kiryu's name registered in the hospital room. There is no point in trying to hide a fact that is now known by the public. So does this mean that the Deidoji faction will now let go of Kiryu? Well, again, not exactly. The Deidoji faction is not inherently evil, nor is it an omnipotent organization. We even saw how much leeway the organization gave to complete the mission on Hawaii such as letting Ichiban and his party be in the know of the whole organization. And we also saw their flaws, such as failing to see through Eiji. So how did this all-powerful organization, as presented in Yakuza 6, became as to what we saw in Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth? The whole purpose of the Daidoji faction is to meet the interests of the Citizens' Liberal Party of Japan. Thus, they are also as powerful as the political party. But since they have lost the election due to Masato's failures in Yakuza Like a Dragon, this led to the current government overtaking their power. With this, the faction knows that they need Kiryu because he is the only one capable enough to fulfill the interests of the political party and that is to oppose the government's plan regarding the disposal of nuclear waste. Kiryu is given this much freedom 
because without him, the political party will continue to weaken. And with how the story ended in Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, the political party is salivating from the fall of the people's trust for the current government. The Daidoji faction no longer sees Kiryu as a threat for their secret in Onomichi, but as an asset that they can use to strengthen their political party. Even in Like a Dragon Gaiden, this argument was brought up by the two elders in the faction. Should they treat Kiryu in a bad way? Or should they try to please him? And their decision seems more transparent now based on that post credit scene. Kiryu Kazuma lives again, but is not yet free from the faction. So that's why in a future Like a Dragon game, there will definitely be a narrative where Kiryu tries to leave the faction and reunite with Haruka. Reuniting with his family is his reason to live again. Him revealing his name is a sign that he will one day show up in the doorsteps of the Morning Glory Orphanage, greeting them with a big happy smile. So how about you guys? Did you like the ending of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth? I know that a lot of people were actually disappointed with this ending. But in my perspective, I gotta see where they were going for. These are the reasons as to how the story ended there. But gameplay-wise, I really got addicted to Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. If you're curious why, then check this video out. Now, if you love Yakuza content, then please tiger drop that like and subscribe button and support Otaka Defined. This is Math, and stay awesome, my dudes. Thank you.